Jefferson's son used to tell you all that you have to believe in yourself 100%. What does that look like? Thank you for your question. You didn't like my answer? <laughs> it's the, I'll give you the long form. Oh, thank you. No problem. <laughs> Human beings have tools. We all have pretty much the same tools. Okay. Those tools are? Can someone give me one tool? Hearing. Hearing. Most of us can hear, although mine's dissipating, but <laughs> still a little bit. What's another tool we have? Seeing. Seeing. Another tool? Speech. <laughs> another tool we have. Speech comes out of what? Thinking. Thinking. That's it. Our thinking creates the dialogue that we manifest with our speech. So yes, you could say one of those tools is thinking. And another tool would be sensation. It's a, that's the kinesthetic. Yeah, baby. <laughs> another is smelling. Basically, our sense organs. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body. That's what we have in this country. And in Buddhism, they have one word more called thinking or mind. Okay? Function is eye. Dust is seeing. I mean, function. The root is eye. Function is seeing. Dust is black t-shirt. Root is nose. Function is smelling. Dust is Cambridge Zen Center odor. <laughs> Root is body. Function is sensation. Dust is warm. Root is ear. Function is listening. Dust is huh. <laughs> Why make that? Uh, that's clearer. Okay. Root is mind. Function is thinking. Dust is object of mind. Okay. What's interesting about all those things is they're not what we are. They're the tools we use. Our challenge as human beings is we get screwed up and we start to believe we are the tools. And then we have to defend our tools, even though they're not what we are. It's like a, a carpenter. Here's my hammer, here's my nails, here's my chisel, here's my power saw, here's my building design. Oh my God, what a beautiful house. It's not the house, it's the tools. There's one tool that we attach to more often than any of the others, and that tool is thinking. thinking. The Master Sung Sign used to say, Oh, thinking, thinking, thinking. <laughs> thinking, thinking, thinking. <laughs> it wore him down. <laughs> The challenge is, when the thoughts appear, that's my idea. That's my opinion. That's my judgment. And then we fall into the abyss with it, even though it's just a function of mind. It just thinks. I used to have a very good friend uh, that I practiced with and he used to say quite often to me, you know, Mark, thinking is not your friend. 
And it took me a little while to get that, but after you practice for a little while, it becomes very apparent. The mind is just this garbled diarrhea that flows out. <laughs> it has no boundaries. Just in order to see that clearly, and once you see it, it can't control you anymore. So in order to see that, as a Master Sung Sign used to say it this way, you must perceive before thinking. You must keep a don't know mind 100%. What am I? Don't know. In that not knowing, there's a little space. In that little space is before thinking. In being able to perceive that, you're relieved from the burden of carrying your ideas around with you, defending them, protecting them, using them to fight each other. Okay. Believing in yourself, his meaning is believing in true nature, in your essential being. That means Confidence in don't know. That's what his meaning was. Not confidence in some idea. Not confidence in some smell, in some scent, in some sight. You know, I was mentioning to the gentleman who built this beautiful altar. We used to have an old funky altar. We actually had a good friend that uh, when they were tearing down the old courthouse in Cambridge, he went down there and stole the front of one of the places that the judge sat. <laughs> and we made that into the altar. But it was a little too down home, and so different people have come and gone, and somebody said, you know, it would be nice to have a really nice altar. The only value in this altar is to inspire each one of you to have a question. If it doesn't inspire you, its best use is as firewood. That's what everything at the Zen Center is. It's meant to encourage practice. If you can't use it for that, it has no value. Just some empty teaching. Believing in yourself means being able to have the mirror appear <coughs> and in some way being able to sit comfortably with not knowing. What a gift. One thing about this particular school is it doesn't have a lot of frills. So it's kind of hard to, you know, find some dogma or some type of something that you can hang on to. Because it's designed not to have that. It's the purest teaching I've ever encountered. That's why 45 years later, Somehow it keeps bubbling up. Believing in yourself, believing in your true self, trusting the inherent connectedness of all beings and life. And I'll tell you a very interesting story. <clears throat> I was able at one point in my life to do a long retreat and so I went up to Maine and did a long retreat a hundred days didn't talk to anybody for a hundred days well actually a few hikers came by at different times and they yelled at me and then I yelled back they'd call hey how you doing I'd say 
Oh, I'm doing fine. I'd say, oh, shit, I must miss it. <laughs> then I'd feel guilty for a day or two. You know, How could I have done that? I'm blowing the whole retreat. <laughs> Anyways, when I was first uh, doing this retreat, uh, I intended to do it in the winter, but I couldn't comfortably leave my job for a whole bunch of reasons, so I didn't get there till April. I got there in April, it was black fly season just rolling in. It would take me half an hour to get ready to go outside because there were just so many bugs. And then of course black fly season ends up in Maine and you immediately roll into mosquito season. And, uh, and uh, interestingly enough, initially it was uh, a killing bonanza for me. <laughs> you know, the black flies would land and I'd be sitting there going, <laughs> Dead. But over a period of weeks, it began to shift by itself. And then I'd have a fly or a mosquito land on me, and I started gently brushing them off. And then if they were in the house, I might try to gently take them out. To this day, I have no idea what happened, except I felt something for those mosquitoes and black flies. Why? don't know. If you ever have a chance to do a long retreat, That quality of life comes up by itself just in the gradual sensitivity to the moment and to your life situation. It's a, it's a compassion, a common passion for all things. It appears all by itself. <laughs> 